I would like to give some advice about the building techniques and construction details that you can use in your shelter design. We saw so far about 40 different proposals from teams and individuals who are participating in the course. We went for, through different phases from concept design, schematic design and design development this uh, last week. Now we are uh, talking about the construction details. And this is really the moment when we uh, will understand how these projects, how the shelters that you have designed can be built, what materials you are planning to use, what construction techniques are best to use in your case. We have two kinds of projects. We have the projects that are locally built with local labor and local techniques. So in that case, you would probably need to do some more research on how you would be building out of wood, how you would be building out of uh, bamboo or out of uh, materials that are left over from other storms and then to see how these materials can be integrated in the actual construction. The other types of projects that we have are the ones that are prefabricated. Those are projects that are built in a factory or uh, prepared elements of them are prepared in a factory before the actual construction. They're shipped on site and then they're assembled on site with a relatively unskilled labor. This is why it has to be relatively easy uh, to construct. Imagine buying furniture from Ikea, from any other store, where the, the two kits come to you, all the tools, all the materials, all the joints come, and you have a little instruction booklet that says how you have to put it together, what are the phases of the construction, and uh, uh, what is the order that you need to follow. We are looking for something similar. We want to understand what are the materials that you're using, how you plan to integrate them in, into your project, and then what are the toolkits that you would be using to construct these, uh, these shelters. In the shelters, we are looking for uh, transitional shelters or shelters that are built somewhere in a camp and then after the end of the conflict, hopefully very soon, we don't want any of those conflicts to last any longer, so hopefully you know, peace would come to places of war and then fast recovery would come in places affected by natural disasters. In all those places, we're looking for something temporary. In uh, the case of refugee camps, foreign countries give land for, to refugees and you often have millions of people living in, uh, in one camp. Um, this is why it's very important for us to think about something transitional, something temporary, something that could be dismantled after the conflict and could be shipped somewhere else, reintegrated, reused in, uh, by local community or, or somewhere else uh, in the world. We want the constructions to be temporary, so once they are dismantled, there is nothing that's left on the ground. We looked at uh, the example of Burning Man or the art festival here in the United States where people come for a couple of weeks, they install tents or, or their RVs or you know these uh, trucks that you can sleep in. And after the end of the festival, everything is gone. So people take everything and, and the desert is cleared and there is nothing left there. We're looking for something similar. So wherever you are designing uh, your shelters, think about something that is easy to remove afterwards. We're not looking for concrete and uh, heavy steel welding and, and heavy constructions that are almost impossible to move afterwards. We're looking for something that is lightweight, something that uh, is easy, as easy to assemble as it is to disassemble and, and to uh, package again and to remove. That is why uh, your shelters should not be, um, should not have heavy foundations, should not have concrete base, but you have to think about solutions which are sitting on the ground without the need of any heavy foundation. We uh, looked at a number of examples, uh, for example, the uh, IKEA UNHCR shelter, we looked at the Alto University shelters and a number of other projects that uh, basically they sit on the ground and they touch the ground and are 
uh, anchored to the ground because of their own weight, but they don't necessarily have a, a heavy foundation. So that is why we uh, invite you to work with lightweight materials. We invite you to uh, maybe build something, uh, build a, a structural frame that is made either out of steel or it's made out of uh, paper tubes as the Shigeruban pavilions or it's made out of uh, um, wood or bamboo if you want and to use some kind of cladding around it, okay? This would allow for uh, a very lightweight cladding to be used in the shelter that can later be uh, reused. Some of you, as we saw, have integrated the structure within the panels. So instead of designing a structural frame and then adding the cladding on it, some of you have, in fact, implemented design in which the structure and the uh, membrane are uh, embedded and uh, prefabricated earlier. So they're shipped on site as panels and then they're assembled either internally or externally by connecting to each other. That is also one uh, possible solution. Another aspect of uh, the shelter design is the transportation. As you know, if you uh, are building these shelters somewhere in a factory, they need to be uh, transported on site. And the way you do that is either you fly them on uh, airplanes, usually military uh, or cargo airplanes, or you can uh, maybe uh, bring them on boats and then load them on trucks and then the trucks will deliver them on the site. Any of these solutions are uh, possible. In any case, whatever the transportation means that you're using is, you have to think of very lightweight structure because the heavier the materials are, the more difficult it is to ship them, the more expensive it is to transport them, and the more expensive they are as materials. So we're looking for a minimum solution. Remember, Mia said, less is more. So what would it be uh, of your design so that you can make more using less. How can you make some shelter that is both sturdy, comfortable, uh, protects from the climate, and at the same time it's very lightweight, it's minimal. We know another example of Buckminster Fuller in his uh, houses where he used lightweight uh, frame uh, that is uh, covered with aluminum cladding, and the idea was that this, uh, this house should weight as little as possible. So in your shelters, we're also looking for something that weighs as little as possible. That would also allow for an easier construction process. If the panels that you're using or the modules that you're using are lightweight, they can easily be lifted and transported by people on the camp. They can easily be assembled by a team of maybe four people in a day. And instead of that, if you're using something heavy, that needs to be uh, transported on, on uh, uh, heavy trucks that needs to be lifted with cranes and then the whole assembly process becomes much more difficult. So instead of big modules that are heavy to transport, we invite you to work with smaller modules that are lightweight, easy to carry on and easy to assemble. You have to see what materials you are, uh, could be using for this. You, there are a number of uh, plastics and resins that are uh, uh, an efficient thermal insulation. They're also waterproof that you can use for the cladding. Uh, you can use also plywood that is uh, painted from the exterior to protect it from the humidity and uh, from the rain. You can uh, use uh, a variety of uh, local materials as uh, some communities have used, for example, woods or, or leaves or uh, uh, bamboo that uh, are could be uh, implemented in uh, exterior uh, in the exterior membrane for the structure as we said bamboo or other kinds of wood or, or steel even plastic tubes and paper tubes would be uh, important in the end we want to understand how all these materials are joined together how do you combine 
the roof with the side wall. How do you combine the side wall with the, uh, the ground floor, with the uh, place where it touches the floor? How do you make sure the water doesn't go inside the shelter? How do you make sure that, that the rain does not go inside but it goes to the exterior or it's collected somewhere in the perimeter and then later integrated in the storage units in, in uh, connection to the shelters? So all these uh, building techniques and construction details is something that we would like to see this week and uh, uh, on Saturday we'll discuss it all together. So uh, we invite you to prepare drawings that are in scale 1 to 20 or 1 to 10 where you show us a section of the building, a cross section and longitudinal section and you tell us how the different uh, uh, parts of the building are joined together and how this connection point which we emphasize on the joint between horizontal and vertical between uh, of the roof and wall between the vertical uh, side of the wall and the horizontal plane of the floor how all these joints are are built and how do they work so we would invite you to uh, look into that because that's going to be essential for us to understand how this shelter will be built and again, we'll discuss it on Saturday. Please post your projects on our forum and we'll comment on them, we'll give you feedback and we will uh, work hard to prepare the projects for the final submission, which will be about two weeks from now.